I recently went to Washington University in St. Louis to help my cousin move in for his freshman year in college. And it got me thinking about the off the court recruiting process as well as what I did on the court to be able to play college tennis. Luckily, I got a great player to give you a glimpse of his experiences in juniors and in college. I asked him five questions to help give you more insight. Hopefully, these questions will help you in your college recruiting process or even your tennis journey. Make sure you stay till the end to watch some tennis clips as well as to hear my comments on his answers. Let's get into it. I'm at Washington University in St. Louis. I got a star player over here. What All-American means is that you have to be ranked top 10 in the country at the end of the year in that division in doubles. To become All-American in singles, you have to be ranked top 20 at the end of the year. What is the number one tip you would give for a junior looking to play college tennis? I would say always you know, be active in emailing coaches and being out there making connections. For me, I got into college through you know, talking to a bunch of friends and stuff. So okay. always being active, always going out there and you know, never selling yourself short are the things I would say. Is there anything uh, tennis related that you would say, a tip that you would recommend maybe? Always make sure you're having fun with it is my number one thing. If you're ever not having fun with it, you know, take a step back and look at why. At the end of the day, we are playing a sport. We are given a great chance here to be able to play tennis at all. And so I always look at it as a way to get out there and have some fun and, you know, compete. So I know you play D2 for St. Edwards University in Texas. Um, you're an All-American there. You're also an All-American here. Obviously, you're really good at tennis. <laughs> what is the difference between D2 tennis and D3 tennis? The biggest thing I would say is, as weird as it might sound, you see a lot more international kids in D2, and it's a different style. You see a lot of styles that are players you've never seen before, and a little bit more grindy, whereas in D3, you know, the points are quicker, and it's a lot more, you hate to say, American style versus D2, where, you know, you're playing 20, 30 ball rallies every other point. Wow. Okay. What about the, uh, like, practice schedule and workout schedule between D2 and D3? D2 was a lot more flexible as far as athletic goes. Um, the professors and stuff were you know a little more understanding d3 it's academics do come first and got to be on top of your stuff you know, no one's going to change their schedules for you that's the big thing so what's a day in the life as a college tennis player so in the spring especially early on we wake up at around 5 30 um you know, get ready and maybe eat a little bit of food and then go out to practice which is indoors about 20 30 minutes away it's starting at 6 30 until 8 30. we'll do a little bit of conditioning as well maybe a little bit of running uh, we get back, go to class for you know, four or five hours a day, and then three out of the five days of the week, we have workout for about an hour and a half at around four o'clock. Um, you fit meals in between there and then go home, do a bit of studying, do a little bit of stretching, and then call it a night early because back up again at 5.30. Okay. And on the weekends, you have tournaments, I guess. Is it every weekend, every other weekend? How does that work? Pretty much every weekend. Um, last year, we had one weekend that we didn't have a match. Is there any other tips or advice you would give to a junior player looking to play college? Get your time management straight, especially early on. Those are hard habits to build in college once you get here. The work's really tough. All the D3 schools are prestigious academic schools. And like I said, you know, just get practicing because D3 is not the joke that everyone thinks it is. It's very competitive at the top, I think. The top 10 teams could be ranked in D1 as well. And so, while well, it might get a bad rap, D3 is still very competitive. Last question. If you were to look back in your junior career, is there anything you would have done differently to maybe improve your tennis or you know, get better or change something about it? I would have done a lot more fitness and probably a little more weightlifting as well. I think growing up, my goal was to make points as short as possible and that you know, really came back to bite me towards the end. It's not the most fun thing, getting out there and doing some long distance running some sprints and then getting in the gym and getting stronger as well and you know not having to cramp out at the end of these matches would be the one thing I wish I could go back and do. Okay. All right, you heard it from Avi Ramaretti. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, man.
Abi made some really good points to elaborate on them. I think it's good to contact coaches to take that initiative and to show interest. That way the coach will remember you more. In terms of having fun, I feel like sports and tennis especially, there are a lot of ups and downs. You're not always gonna play your best, you're not always gonna have fun, but it's very important what you do during those down times and during those losing streaks that really help. There are always two thoughts in the times when you're not playing well. The first thought is, oh my God, you suck so bad, you should just quit. The second thought is, okay, what am I doing wrong? Let's think about how I can improve my tennis and how to get better and what changes I need to make. And if you can stick with this mindset, it will really change your tennis and I think it will give you a lot more confidence once you figure out how to get out of that losing streak and start winning more matches. For the last question, I loved his answer about doing more fitness and I'll give you a perfect example of why fitness is so important in tennis. Because I'm more fit now compared to when I was in juniors, my mindset has also changed. Now, whenever I see my opponent is on the thick side with two C's, I already know what to do. I just make him run because I believe that I've worked harder and there's no way he's gonna outlast me in a full match. So all I do is try to make balls and make him run. Hope you guys liked the video. Thank you guys for watching. If you like these kinds of videos, leave a comment down below. I'd really appreciate it. See y'all in the next one.